name's Mandy and this is my channel Make It So. So today I am joining the vloggers tour for another October challenge and this time it is Finish That Whip 2024. Now this challenge is being run by Lisa from One Lisa Show and what the challenge involves is if you have any unfinished projects in your sewing room then now's the time to get them out and try and finish them. So I have been through all my whips and I will show you my little clip where I tell you all about where I store them and then come back to me and I will tell you how many I have. So here are the offending articles. You'll see normally in the background of my videos that I have this huge Calax unit and it is full of different fabric types. They're all labelled with my Cricut. And up here in one corner, it says projects. And then if I move the camera across and down, you'll see there's another one with projects. And these are full of my unfinished items that I'm going to go through with you today and give reasons why I never finish them and hopefully that'll make you feel a bit better about ones that you haven't done. I do also have some Think Pink boxes which I'll show you and they also have items in them. So I've been through those drawers today and I have got a few of these lovely Think Pink boxes as well with uh, projects in and I actually have ones that I've started on because it is work in progress I've got 14 now I'm sorry if that upsets a few of you because I know there are people out there some of my sewing friends who can't stand having a whip in their room and they have to finish the project straight away they can't leave it and um, let it grow like mine have but in my defense I have been sewing for quite a few years now and some of them are quite old and if I look at them now, I wonder why they turned out to be left in my drawer and um, turn into a whip because some of the things I've not done are so simple, but we have to start somewhere. And I think what happened was I used to start a project and then if something went wrong, I would throw a hissy fit, put it in the naughty corner, then put it in a bag and put it in my drawers as whips. So now I'm much better and I do persevere and you would have seen that probably if you followed me before and seen some of my vlogs like the Andes jacket and the Sorrento jacket because both of those would have ended up in that naughty corner and eventually in the drawer if I hadn't persevered like I do now. So there's unlimited entries to this competition. I am going to put the rules up on this side of the screen for you and there's also some brilliant prizes and Lisa's had some lovely sponsors come forward so it's definitely worth doing and it'll make you feel better because you're finishing some of those things that have been lurking in your sewing room depths of drawers or in the corner somewhere so what I thought I would do is I've done number one to 14 in my little pot so that Instead of doing what I tried to do before, I think at the end of last year I said that I would try and do one a month and it just hasn't worked out like that because something always crops up in life or another challenge <laughs> comes, a, comes across my path um, or something else. So I thought I'd try it a different way this time where I don't actually think, right, I'm going to finish that particular project, I'm going to do a lucky dip and I've numbered them 1 to 14 in my book and then I'm going to pick out the number and do that one and then it will help me get through them gradually I think. So what I'm going to do first is pick one because I thought I don't really want to talk to you for ages and ages telling you about every single whip and why it's a whip. If it's something you want to know I'm more than happy to share with you but for this video I thought we'd just pick a few. <laughs> so the first one I'm getting out is number nine. So number nine I'm going to find in my book because this has taken me about an hour to go through them. Uh, it's one that I almost have finished actually 
and it's the Amy Butler Anna Tunic. So what's wrong with this one? Why did it turn into a whip? The first thing is, I was making this quite a few years ago, and excuse me for um, looking down, but I'm going to get it out to show you. And this was a pattern that I'd originally got, I have talked about it before, I originally got it in a sew magazine, and I'll tell you the date of this sew magazine, it's July 2015, so that gives you a clue how long I've had this one. <laughs> oh, that's a bit terrible, but this is definitely an eye-opener for me as well. And then I found in a charity shop the actual pattern. So I actually sourced this one from a charity shop. I'd seen this gorgeous curtain in there and it had lining as well. So I thought I'd make one out of that first just to see what it looked like and then make another one. But because it's a curtain, it's quite a heavy fabric. But since I spoke about it, I've actually done all the roulette loops and buttons as well. So it's meant to look like that. Um, it, my questions were when I was looking through this whip, does it still fit me? Will I wear it? What do I need to do? Um, it does fit me. I thought I'd walk around in it earlier just to check that when I moved around, I didn't get a bit caught up. Um, so it's definitely the right size still, thankfully. Um, it just needs a belt, a hem, and there's a little flower brooch on the side that I would like to do as well. As to whether I'll wear it, probably not out as much as I thought I would, because it's not quite my style now. But I want to finish that, and then I can always donate it back to a charity shop that takes handmade items, because I think that would be nice for someone else to benefit from it if I don't wear it but I might change my mind once I've finished it. You never know. So that's the first one that I'm going to attempt to do. So I'm going to do another little lucky dip. And the next one is number three. Now I know straight away this is in the boxes. So this is one I talked about before as well, quite recently actually, because it is quite a recent whip and it is a sew over it pattern. Excuse me moving around again. And this one is the sew over it ultimate shirt. Now, I know exactly what happened with this one. I was on step 35 of 59 and it was the sleeves that got caught me out. Um, it's the first placket that I'd ever attempted and because this material, I love it, it's very drapey, but also very slippery. Um, because the material, when I folded it up to do the little placket pieces, it was causing me a bit of grief. Um, so I put it in the naughty corner, but I've actually made a couple of different um, garments since with plackets. One was my Nina Lee Park Lane blouse, and that was with a very slippery fabric, and also my Sorrento jacket. But the Nina Lee, um, instructions made a bit more sense than these ones so I'm actually going to use them and finish off because I've done all the sleeves and everything it's just the plackets put the sleeves in hem it done so that won't take long either so I'm quite happy I've got that one picked so we'll put that on the side and then I'll just do a couple more because we could be here forever <laughs> and the next one I'll pick out is number four Ah, oh, right, okay. So this one, I haven't got the instructions, but I'll put a photo in for you. As soon as I say instructions and style arc, you might understand why it turned into a whip. Um, it was quite early on when I got back into sewing last year that I started making this one. And it had some terminology that I didn't really understand and when I googled it, it still didn't make any sense because there was a bit where you have a split on it and you had to bag it out. And I was like, what does bag it out mean? So I looked on Google and it kept telling me about bag things where you put the lining in, things like that. So um, I worked it out because I just happened to see an Instagram clip where someone done a split and they turned it inside out. And then when they pulled it round the right way, it was a really neat way to finish the split. 
but there were some other bits on the instructions that just totally threw me. So again, it ended up in the naughty corner and then it ended up in my whip drawer. So I'm going to revisit that because it might make more sense to me now. We hope. Right, so the last one. Where are we? Is number 10. Right, let's have a look at number 10. Okay, so it's my Christmas, oh dear, I'm mentioning that word, kilo wrap dress. Now, this was a bit of a disaster um, because I was, well, it was Christmas and I was rushing to get some things done. And what happened was I was doing kilo wrap dress. It's quite a long dress, quite long pattern pieces and I didn't have enough to do it double-sided because it's a directional print. And I'll show you the print. It's this one, which is very cute. And it's a jersey. So me thinking I was being clever, I made the fabric, instead of being on the fold, it was a single layer. And I cut out this other piece. I'd cut out one bit and I thought, oh, I can make, do a bit of, um, pattern Jenga and I can cut the other piece out like this. So I'm going to try and get it out the bag and show you what happened. If I can find the pieces. It may take me a while because I have all the scraps as well. Right, so. <laughs> that was one piece which was the back which is fine. I say it's directional, it's not because you have got some upside down ones. So what did I do wrong with it? Let's have a look. Ah, I can see what I did. I was starting to think, why, why did I put that as a whip? That looks all right to me, but it's not. So what I did was, I cut one piece out like that, but as you can see, they're actually on the side rather than facing up or down. So I did that side piece wrong because I didn't flip the fabric, did I? So obviously I didn't have enough fabric and I thought, great, I really wanted to make that into a lovely Christmas dress because the kilo wrap dress, so comfortable. And obviously after Christmas dinner, you can release the the uh, ties a bit and no one would know <laughs> but I couldn't make it because I didn't have any more fabric so it went in my whip pile even though I just thought I'm gonna have to cut it out for something different because I've got no fabric left so suddenly as if by magic Rachel from Stitched Up was doing a de-stash and she had some of that fabric so I thought I've got to have it and then I can recut it out and make it and that was meant to be for last Christmas but then I had my son's dressing gown which I was still sewing up Christmas Eve so there was no way I was gonna then do a kilo as well in that time frame so I can get this done and then hopefully I'll get to wear it this Christmas so that is my last whip I'm going to show you but some of the ones like I've said to you they don't need much doing at all. Um, one of them's a pair of knickers, just needs elastic putting on. Um, I've got another one where all I've got to do is their pajamas, their walk the plank pajamas by Pattern for Pirates. All I've got to do is sew up the legs and they're done. So I'm really positive that I can try and do this. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is take them uh, to any sewing socials that I go to for a few hours or when I attend the virtual sewing rooms because I think that'll be a good time to get those bits done because I don't have to concentrate if it's when it's a brand new pattern. Um, these are things that I've had for a while so I'm thinking I should be okay. So anyway let me know if you're going to be taking part in the challenge i'd love to see or i'd like to know i'm not the only one with lots of whips in my sewing room and um i'd love to see what you make so put anything in the comments below about how many whips you've got what you're hoping to do 
and then reveal your makes on October the 30th using the hashtag finishthatwhip2024 and also tag Lisa from at one Lisa show on Instagram. So have fun. I'm now going to put my whips away and hide them away again, <laughs> but they're not as bad as I thought. So it's been a great learning curve today. So I look forward to seeing all your makes and take care. And if you haven't subscribed already, I'd love you to join my channel. Give me a little thumbs up and I'll see you soon. Bye.